So I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm the SRE lead at Dropbox, and we're just going to talk a little bit about monitoring Nginx today. Um, so or actually, let's talk about Dropbox a little bit first. So we have uh, over 200 million users. We have tens of thousands of machines at this point. Um, this is split between Amazon and our own data centers. Um, it's about 50-50 right now. We run th thousands of MySQL master instances. This isn't including slaves, so we're in the, like, in the thousands and thousands of just MySQL servers alone. Um, and we run lots and lots of Nginx. This is both split, run in EC2 as well as in our own data centers. So a big problem for us is monitoring it. So this is probably what you guys either saw this morning or have used on your own, setting up like the basic status handler. And we, we actually have it enabled, but we don't do almost anything with it. Um, it's good to sort of deny other places aside from your own IPs. It gives you some basic things, um, active connections, uh, really basic stats, nothing really exciting. Um, basically from the wiki page, here are the things that it, it actually monitors. Uh, active connections is really the only thing that we really look at from this. Um, I think we track this one, but it's not something we actually use that actively. So like I said, it's not that useful. It's really hard to parse. It's not like a machine readable format. Um, I mean, it is, I guess, new line delimited and has some spaces and like you can parse it, but it's not great. Uh, the stats aren't broken down by response codes. Um, I don't know if any of you have done like sort of large scale monitoring of Nginx, but it's really useful for us to know what, uh, if we're seeing 200s, 400s, 500s, 300s, like what's actually happening. Um, and we want to know this from front ends, we want to know this from back ends. We don't just want to know that, you know, we have connections. Um, and also we found the stats are a little buggy. We've seen counters in the, in the status stub just get stuck and they'll just never increment anymore for us. So we said, can we do better? Um, and we said, well, what about logging? We said, no, not logs. Logs really are not a great way to monitor it real time. Um, if you get into the logging sort of frameworks, you're gonna have to pull these logs off, potentially parse them, put them into HBase, put them into Hive, run reports. It's like doing the map reduces and all of that it just takes way too long. So it's not real time enough. Our sort of requirement is we want these stats within, the, within a minute interval. We want the whole roll up from like Nginx all the way into like a graph on our web browser to be less than a minute. Um, right now it's about two, but it's, it's pretty good. So we said, okay, we could do an Nginx module. That's also not so great. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to have to recompile it every time I add a new stat to it. Um, that's not so great. So we started thinking about this, and the guy on my team was like, okay, we can do better. Maybe we can just do a Lua module. Um, so we ended up writing Lua to do this, and I think the talk later tonight is about Lua as well. And it's super powerful for Nginx. Um, Basically, it allows us to get the best of both worlds. We can get dynamic stats. It's customizable on the fly, and it's actually a pretty low server impact. We actually didn't get the chance to measure this because, well, we did at the time. We looked at the logs just to like, make sure there wasn't a massive increase in response time. Um, but because we obviously didn't have the stats before and after, we only just added them. Um, we, didn't really, we didn't really look at it that closely. Um, and we can add a format that can be parsed. So how do you do this? So you set up a stats container. It's pretty simple. Um, you increment counters and you export stats on a handler. Um, we actually do all via HTTP. All of our servers at Dropbox have an HTTP handler at the same, exact same location, export stats in the exact same way. It's all aggregated through the exact same system. It's all put into a time series database and we have a generic sort of like log or generic front end to it that allows us to drill down on stats and build dashboards. Um, so we want an Nginx to look the same way. So you basically initialize Lua. We have set up a shared variable that's five megs um, and we call this a init by Lua file which is basically what we set up the set up Lua with. Um, and then we have a log by Lua file uh, function or thing that's called. That's basically, whenever the logging line is called, we're actually gonna instantiate this as, at that point. Um, so we set up our counters. This is pretty basic. This is, we have many more in ours. Um, we start the start time, the, num the stats, we look at the request total, the amount of total sum time, meaning so we can get an average latency out of that if we divide request, uh, the time by the number of requests. Um, and then we monitor the upstreams as well. And we actually, in ours, break these out by like the upstream names and the request totals and all of that by each one. Um, so then when we log it, we just basically do something like this, which is increment the counter by one when you see a request. Um, and you can do the same thing for the upstreams and you kind of get the timing there as well. Um, so how do you export it? We just have a handler that does the exact same thing. Um, we hit dbz stats and we get our output uh, and then Basically, when you hit that, it runs this function, which basically make for this purpose, it's actually doing key value, um, just space delimited. But in ours, we actually do have a much more complex JSON format that that's outputted. Um, and in this, like you can kind of see here that 
we roll these up by response codes. So 2XX is all the 200s rolled up. We roll up all the 300s, we roll up all the 400s, all the 500s. And this is actually just a sample of the output. We actually have much more that's actually outputted here um, for the upstreams and for all the data. We also add like specific tags for the service. Um, for example, we want to know what front ends this is coming from. So this comes from the Nginx www cluster um, and when the stats started. Some of this is like, the reason it looks a little funky is that we, this is our stats format and it allows us to handle aggregation seamlessly all the way up the stack. We don't have to worry about writing rules to do aggregation or anything like that. These numbers on the right hand column sort of denote that. And that allows us to kind of have an end product that looks like this, which is this is like our Nginx 200s by cluster. Um, and it's pretty simple. I think this whole rollout took maybe 24 hours to do across everything. Um, so yeah, any questions? Um, and we're hiring. Uh, we use HBase to store the stats. We actually put things through, it's got a pipeline, basically it runs through, and eventually ends up stored in HBase, and then we have front ends on top of that that allow us to like render graphs. No, we actually have a hierarchical uh, collection framework. Um, so you can imagine that it's very hard to collect across tens of thousands or like nodes, so we have base level collectors, and then base level collectors aggregate to aggregators, aggregators ag go to roots, roots then store into HBase, but we actually store the machine level ones as well, so every level of the aggregation tree only sends upwards what it needs to do for the next level of aggregation, but logs its own data to HBase. It's all in the, that's it, that was pretty much all the code that's, ours is a little more complex because we have a, we have to do some stuff with JSON to make the output look like that. Um, yep, it's already there. Yeah, we don't have to do anything. Yep. Okay, cool, thank you.